the tonic pupil and the light reflex test. In this case, the left eye is the affected one. In normal illumination, the affected pupil is more dilated than the normal pupil on the right, as indicated by the blue circles. When light is shone onto the good eye, the pupil constricts, but there is no consensual reflex in the left eye. The right pupil dilates a little, but there is no reaction in the left pupil. In fact, the, the affected pupil does react, but so slowly that it usually cannot be observed during a normal test. Once again, the pupil constricts to light, but there is still no visible consensual reflex. After a few seconds, both pupils look similar because the normal pupil dilated in the absence of a light stimulus. When light is shone onto the affected eye, the pupil does not constrict, but there is a consensual reflex. The right pupil dilates a little, but the left pupil stays dilated. Again, the affected pupil does not constrict, but there is still a consensual reflex. Let's take another look. Instant direct constriction on the right, no consensual constriction on the left. Instant consensual reflex on the right, no direct constriction on the left. Note that both pupils look similar when not illuminated. They look identical in the dark since they are both dilated. The tonic pupil and the swinging light test. Like in the light reflex test, the normal pupil constricts to direct and consensual light, but there is no response at all in the left affected pupil. The tonic pupil and the near test. The pupils are at a resting state, not accommodating, while the patient is looking at the distance target. The eyes converge and the pupils constrict when the patient is looking at the near target. The pupils relax and enlarge, not accommodating anymore, when the patient is looking back at the distance target. The Holmes-Addy syndrome therefore does not affect the near response.